this time I want to talk a bit about sleep. Um, a fellow from Portugal wrote to me with some questions about sleep, so I will try to answer them. Um, he wrote, it's about sleep and how to deal with a lack of it during the work. I'm a light and rather difficult sleeper myself, and I find that this is the biggest obstacle on my path these days. Often, when I'm in a nice rhythm of practicing twice a day, I get some bad night's sleep because of trouble falling asleep or some noise waking me up or whatever. And then that whole nice Bardonian discipline gets messed up again. Last night, for example, I didn't get my eight hours sleep, and this morning I sat down in my chair ready to work on the step three, but instead of seeing clear images, all I felt were the cobwebs in my head. I wonder if you're familiar with this and what you would recommend. Yes, <laughs> I'm totally familiar with that, especially in the beginning of the work. Um, boy, when I started out, I was living in a one-room cabin with a partner and I would have to get up at 4.30 in the morning in order to have time to do my exercises while he was still asleep. So I had to be very quiet and uh, it was very difficult and I was very sleepy. And eventually I came to understand um, that being sleepy is really all in your mind, um, you can instantly be wide awake. Uh, it's a matter of, of will, uh, just deciding to be awake instead of... Uh, there's almost a self-pity, like, poor me, I had to get up so early to do this, and oh, I feel so sleepy, I just want to go back to bed. That's an emotional response, uh, basically, um, that has little to do with whether or not you are going to feel awake. Also, doing the morning routine of, um, you know, the, uh, um, the, the cold bath or shower or cleaning, uh, the, the dry brushing, a uh, little bit of exercise, before you sit down to do your exercises and, you know, go through the, the process of steadying the mind and clearing the mind and focusing the mind, um, and you will be awake enough to do your exercises. Um, it is a choice. It's hard to really put it into words, um, but play with it. You know, you're, you wake up and you're feeling, oh, God, another morning. Just stop for a second and decide that you are going to be awake and fresh and able to concentrate. Just set your mind in that groove, and it, that will really help. But it is nonetheless important that you get enough sleep. <laughs> So, you know, you might have to change. How early do you go to bed to sleep? Um, a lot of those habits need changing in relation to the Barden work, to the, the every day, no matter what, you know, exercises. You know, you have to get your mind in the right place to do that. And it is up to you. I mean, you can do that. Um, it's fairly easy once you get used to it. At first, it's not easy at all, but, but once you get used to it, it is easy and it's very gratifying to be able to shift your awareness and have that much control over your awareness that you are the one in command at any moment. Um, that is one of the aims of hermetic training, that you are in control of your own mind, your own awareness, at 
all times. At all times. Yeah. Um, also, I'm interested in the broader idea of sleep in hermetics. Do we need less sleep as we advance? Now, that's a common myth, I think. Um, for me, the amount of sleep I have needed has varied over the years. And I've been doing this for a lot of years, so it's gone through a lot of variations. When I was much younger, I physically needed less time sleeping than I do now, that I'm 63, you know. Um, and I, my, my life is structured that I go to bed when I want to go to bed, to go to sleep, and I wake up when I'm awake, you know. I don't have an alarm. I don't live with an alarm clock. So my sleep is free. My sleeping time is free and natural. And I recommend that if you can arrange that in your life to just go to bed when you feel sleepy and wake up when you wake up. You know, get up when you wake up. Um, just go with your natural bodily rhythms and your body's need. But, you know, you have to be careful. You've got to get enough sleep. Sleep is so healing and integrating for the body, the physical body, and for the psyche. You know, the, the whole person needs to get sufficient sleep. You shouldn't strive to require less sleep. There are meditation techniques which can um, fulfill your need for sleep outside of actually sleeping. Um, but those really have nothing to do with hermetic practice itself. Um, yeah. Some people, you know, get it to where they only need an hour or so of sleep a day and are perfectly fine. But that's after, you know, some time of doing special energy meditations and uh, relaxing. You know, my self-healing Archaeus can be very helpful in this. Uh, the deep relaxation that you achieve in the self-healing Archaeus, both physical and emotional and mental relaxation will be healing enough that you won't physically need to sleep as much. Um, yeah. Um, but, you know, don't go about them in, in an effort to reduce your time of sleep. That's not the idea. The idea is health, you know, your healthy being. And uh, doing the Archaeus will benefit you, let's put it that way. Um, and it also helps for falling asleep. A lot of people have trouble falling asleep. The brain is just going a million miles an hour, thinking about what's going on and been going on in your day, etc. Now, the, the trick again is to be in control of your mind, to be able to set your mind on something or completely blank your mind, um, either work, you know. Um, instead of thinking about that, you know, a frustrating little moment at work, you know, set your mind on something when you're falling asleep. Set your mind on a specific thing or idea or project or, you know, just one thing. And focus your mind. Leave it there as you fall asleep. And you will fall asleep while thinking about whatever you set yourself to think about. Or, you know, even better, go into an emptiness of mind and fall asleep from the emptiness. That's very good. Very healing. Um, very good for the dreaming, too. Now, <clears throat> yeah, okay. Um, how does mental wandering relate to sleep? Do you, for example, wander before you go to sleep or maybe after? Um, I do uh, often. Uh, mental wandering right before I am going to sleep, after I've gone to bed. Bed, you know, laying down in bed is a very good position for me for 
for mental wandering or astral wandering. Um, and I'm alone, so it's uh, very convenient as well. Um, if you're sleeping with someone, it's a little more problematic, um, especially astral wandering. You don't want to do if you're sleeping with someone. Um, but mental wandering is very easy. You know, it's very easy to come back immediately, etc. Um, so, yes, I do mental wander a lot before going to sleep, but it's more a matter of convenience than it is anything to do with sleeping. I don't go to sleep during mental wandering. That's something you want to avoid. Uh, you don't want to be mental wandering and get into the habit of falling asleep while you're mental wandering. Um, because you lose consciousness, basically. You, you lose the ability to be conscious in your mental wandering, doing it that way. Um, uh, and uh, lucid dreaming is something that I don't participate in very regularly. Um, I've done a fair amount of it, uh, but I prefer to let my body just sleep, you know, let my mind just sleep, let my psyche just sleep. That's a very healing, natural thing. I don't want to be working while I'm sleeping necessarily, although there are times when I need to. And so I do, but I try not to make a regular habit of it. Because, um, hey, sleeping is good. Sleeping, just that complete loss of control, of just regular sleeping and regular dreaming. These are good healing experiences, good healing things for the body. Um, so, do you sleep anymore at all? Do you consciously travel all the way down as your body swings as your body sinks into recovery mode? Um, yes, I sleep. Um, uh, I sleep every night. <laughs> um, so do uh, there are times when I uh, consciously go to sleep because there is something specific that I need to do uh, in my sleep body, if you will. Um, yeah. Now, dreaming... <clears throat> dreaming takes place in your own psyche. Um, even lucid dreams. Oh, really, especially lucid dreams. These are ways to explore your psyche very consciously in the in the sleep body which is an aspect of your astral body but it is very local uh, it, it has it's active only in your own psyche whereas your regular astral body is active outside of the bounds of your own psyche your own little world but dreaming takes place in the own little world. And, you know, you, you learn a lot about yourself. All dreams relate to yourself. Okay. Uh, so, I guess that's about all I can say. Uh, I hope that was helpful in some way. Um, just decide to be awake. Then. Okay. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>